Hi, and welcome to Japan This Week. A quick recap of some of the stories we've been following on the Japan Today news site for the week ending August 16th. 2024. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida made a surprising announcement that he will step down as Japan's ruling party leader. A mega earthquake advisory warning has been issued by the Japanese Meteorological Agency. A woman has been arrested in Gifu Prefecture for, of all things, throwing eggs. A Japanese idol singer suffered a strange punishment from her company after it came out that she. <gasps> Has a boyfriend, and the 2024 Paris Olympic Games are over. So, overall, did Team Japan meet or exceed our expectations or theirs? I'm Jeff Richards. And I'm Kamasami Kong on, the, on another hot and humid August day. Well, in our first story this week, we start with a bombshell political announcement from Prime Minister Kishida. He won't run in the upcoming party leadership race in September. This now paves the way for a new Japanese Prime Minister to take the helm. Kishida was elected president of the governing Liberal Democratic Party, the LDP, in 2021 for a three year term that expires in September. Whoever wins the party vote will succeed him as prime minister because the LDP controls both houses of parliament. Kishida said at a news conference on Wednesday in order to show a changing LDP, the most obvious first step is for me to bow out. Stung by his party's corruption scandals, Kishida has suffered dwindling support ratings that have dipped below 20%. That's damn near the bottom, isn't it? That's, that's pretty low. That's yeah. pretty low. 20%. Ooh. In order to achieve policies to tackle difficult situations in and outside Japan, regaining public trust in politics is crucial, Kishida said. He called on all aspiring party lawmakers to raise their hands to run for leadership and have an active policy debate during the campaign. Now, Kong, I have to believe, and maybe it's just me, but I have to believe that this is somehow inspired by the Harris Walsh campaign ticket that's going on now in the United States, maybe wanting to mobilize a younger or more energetic voting populace. What do you think? Well, I think it's obvious. I mean, obviously, they are following what they're seeing happening in politics in the USA. Japan is not particularly a voting populace. I say that. With a semi question mark, they have a low voter turnout, maybe about 40%, 40 to 50%, uh, which is lower than the United States, which also has quite a low voter turnout. I'm really hoping that it gets people out, especially younger people, out voting because. Kishida is an older fella. Most of the ruling party is older. It does bring up more questions about who is going to take the helm, right? Who are the leading candidates for this position? One commenter who goes by the name of Sanji Nosebleed said, Different face. Same policies. What do you think? I mean, that's a fair comment, especially in Japan. We always we trot this comment out pretty much every general election, right?、Uh, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. I think what they really need to do is inject some younger people. And I'm not just talking about the LDP, I'm talking about any of the parties that are running in the general election. When we talk about this particular story, Kishida san stepping down, he He's stepping down at the end of his three year term. So it doesn't mean that whoever wins this party race is going to be the prime minister. There's a good possibility. Now, there are some people that have been bandied about as potential successors. Obviously, for me, the first person that came to mind was Koike, the Tokyo governor, but she's got her hands full. There are some other females that have been put up for this Foreign Minister Yoko Kamakawa. Comes to mind, but other people, former Defense Minister Shigeru Ishiba is in there, Digital Minister Taro Kono is in there, and former Environment Minister Shinjiro Koizumi is in there as well. Yeah, that name sounds familiar. Who is he? He is the son of former Prime Minister Koizumi, who led Japan back in the late 90s, early 2000s, correct? 
I'm curious to know what are the main reasons why Kishida has decided not to run for re-election? Taking responsibility for some of the party's corruption scandals. Also, his dwindling support ratings, we just mentioned that, dipping below 20%. Yeah. That's pretty darn low. I mean, when we talk about other politics, uh, you know, Canada or the United States or England, when their numbers start to dip down around 40%, people are screaming for new new votes and no confidence votes and stuff like that. I think 20%, he's cutting it, like you said, very close to the bottom of the barrel. Crowd size kind of matters in this case, right? I guess, yeah. I, I hate hearing that word, but you are absolutely correct. Crowd size matters. Let's just hope that people get out and vote. And I don't really care whether they vote for the LDP or any of the other parties, but get out and vote. Change things in Japan. It's time for the young people to step up, I think. Well, Puky2, that's one of our commenters' names. Puky2 says, out with the old, in with the old. Just swell real swell. Yes, I think that goes along with what Sanji Nosebleed said about different face and same policies. I think we're going to see the same old, same old happen unless they bring somebody in like the younger Koizumi. Will he stand up in a general election that follows, right? Well, the only earth-shattering thing is that Kishida himself decided to step down and it took everyone by surprise. I think that is a little bit earth earth shattering because in Japanese politics, like in most politics, change doesn't come this quickly or this out of the blue. I think it's pretty big news. I'm surprised that our readers didn't have more to say on that. Oh, there, of course, there are more comments, so we encourage you to check both the Japan Today website and the Facebook site as well, because there are many comments in both areas. Oh, yes, that's that's right. I forget about Facebook sometimes when I'm so concerned with uh, the Japan Today site, but yeah, there are a lot of people commenting on Facebook. You know what? Next time we do this, let's bring in some Facebook commenters who comment on the stories and maybe mix it up a little. I've got one coming up in the next story about that mega earthquake warning. As we come to the end of Obon Week, the Japanese summer festival where people return to their hometowns to welcome back their ancestors spirits. It's much like the Festival of the Dead in Mexico and other places, except there's not a lot of parades. Still quite a somber affair, and it, and it does happen in the middle of the hot summer. So in Japan, with the Obon week, this time of year is also the time of year where they have spirits and ghost stories and things like that. It's supposed to send a chill down your spine, which I think is going to help with the heat and the humidity. But many people have altered their travel plans due to the Japan Meteorological Agency issuing an advisory over a potential megaquake. Their terminology, not mine. Hotels and ryokan, which are Japanese-style inns, in coastal areas in central and western Japan received nearly 10,000 cancellations, according to public broadcaster NHK. This comes after the magnitude 7.1 earthquake that struck off of Miyazaki in Kyushu on August the 8th. The advisory that was issued says there's a high potential for a powerful earthquake in the Nankai Trough, which runs 800 kilometers under sea from Shizuoka to the southern tip of Kyushu Island and could affect 28 prefectures. Because of this advisory, beaches were also closed as well as swimming was banned in other areas that could be impacted by a mega quake that came in the Nankai Trough. In so, whoa, 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 hold on. You said swimming was banned. I how did. Do you how do you enforce that? And what's the what's the penalty if you go swimming after it's been banned? I think, in true <laughs> Japanese fashion, they put up signs, uh -huh. and I think the penalty is you get wet. 
uh-huh. <laughs> and, and cooled down, maybe, from the mm. crazy summer heat. Okay. These bans on swimming happened in Shizuoka Prefecture and Mie Prefecture, and it's certainly not the right time of year to be putting this out. It's between 35 and 40 degrees outside. This is when people kind of need to get out into the water. Absolutely. Can you imagine in being in prison, talking to some of the other inmates? One guy asks you, well, what are you in for? He says, I killed my wife. Uh, I killed my mother. And the other guy says, well, I'm in here for, uh, I was swimming when it was banned. I mean, taking that to the nth degree, that would be a humorous situation. I can't imagine anybody being actually arrested for this. They probably get a fine or a ticket. I would just swim away. Can't catch me. So what did the experts have to say about this? Well, the experts point out that the advisory did not mean there would be a mega quake. It was kind of there will be a quake at some point in time. In any case, the advisory serves as a warning to all of us, everybody out there to just be prepared in the event of an earthquake. I do I've... think it's rather suspicious timing and a little bit of an overreaction and perhaps a little irresponsible, I think, to issue that warning, knowing the Japanese populace is going to take it to heart, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, they're just covering their asses and saying, can't say we didn't warn you, right? I guess there's some of that. The why it came out at this point in time is a little suspect. Um, I think they should have thought of that before they put it out. But what did Japan Today readers have to say about it? We got a comment in Facebook from Adam Colella who says, fact is, it's going to happen eventually, right? This is just an mm. advisory because the possibility is higher now than it was before. Be prepared, but don't freak out. Okay, Sarah, Sarah. Thank you, Colella. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Be prepared, but don't freak out. I think that's the new way of saying uh, expect the best, but prepare for the worst. Yep. Another reader who goes by the name of Tora says the government should have known this would happen. You can't cry wolf again and again and again and expect people to panic. Compensation will follow. Sick of my taxes being used for such nonsense. I think what that reader meant to say was you can't cry wolf again and again and not expect people to panic. Okay, that, 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 that's an important word that was left out, not, right? Yeah, I, I, I think when you say stuff like that, people will panic. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So what do you think about the comment where he or she said, compensation will follow, sick of my taxes being used for such nonsense? I particularly don't see that happening. You can't provide compensation because people decided to cancel. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? I think Dante K.H., one of our readers put it very succinctly when he or she said, it seems like gullible people are doing panic shopping and canceling reservations based on the media brainwashing. I'm not a fan of that term, but I think when anything comes out on in the media here, and Kong, you and I are in the media here, if you look at any of the Japanese wide shows or television newspapers, they are just going to see the word megaquake mm -hmm. and they're going to start doing what Dante K says, panic shopping. I just hope that it's not like what we saw during 2000 and 2011 quake, right? Like mm -hmm. people buying up all the water and people buying up uh, toilet paper for some reason. Dante KH goes on to say, this situation is so absurd that it's laughable. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. I, I don't think it's laughable that people make themselves prepared for an emergency or an earthquake. That should be happening. But this could happen in the next 30 years, as that person mentions, or the next 50 or 100 or tomorrow. I don't mean to alarm people, but we have no control over the environment. If an earthquake happens and you're in the... Japan Today headquarters and your wife is at work and your building crumbles and there's no more Keitai, what do you do? Have you, do you have a place where you're supposed to meet? We have talked about places that we're going to meet. And because sometimes I'm working from home now, we have a go bag ready. You know, it has nothing to do with work when I'm at home. We have a go bag ready with water and non-perishable food items and any medicines that we need just to get us through. 
you know, few days until we get back home or some other place. So the takeaway is be prepared, right? Yeah. The takeaway is be like a Boy Scout. Oh, that sounds vaguely sexist. <laughs> be, be like a scout. There we go. Be prepared uh, for anything. Next in crime news this week, we have a story about a rather eccentric woman. Did you mispronounce that? <laughs> uh, no, I pronounced it uh, exactly as written in the story suggestion sent to us by the editors. But I'm laughing because of the dad joke there. Eccentric? Yeah. This woman was arrested for throwing raw eggs at her neighbor's house in Kawabe Town, Gifu Prefecture. According to police, 53-year-old Yoshiko Kakamu threw multiple raw eggs at the house on July 19th and July 25th. Kakamu has denied the allegation, but police said surveillance camera footage showed her throwing eggs from a window of her house. It's hard to deny what's on film, right? Oh, caught red-handed. Yeah, that's right. The woman who lives in the house next to Kakamu told local media at times it was about 20 eggs. She started throwing eggs onto my balcony and garden around the beginning of December 2019. And it has been happening regularly since then. I haven't done anything to her. Uh, I wonder what provoked her, or maybe I should say, I wonder what egged her on. We would love to know this, wouldn't we? The neighbor said Kakamu would also dump trash on our property and call her an old hag. The two women have been neighbors for about 20 years. No shortage of egg puns that we could use, and probably no shortage in the comments for readers. I have a question. Why is this national news? Why is this crime news a, a woman... Throwing eggs at a house. Okay, it might be news because she's been doing it since 2019 on a regular basis. Why is this news? It's trending on Japan today. And so that's probably why we are covering it. It's a slow news week outside of politics and the Olympics. And perhaps readers and commenters are just tired of all the murder and murder-suicide that we see from day to day, but it still fulfills their uh, lust and longing for Japanese police meeting out justice. I don't know. I personally don't think that it's a, a newsworthy story except for the crazy relationship between these two women and somebody finally getting arrested. I don't know. What did Japan Today readers have to think about this? Well, some dude, a guy who goes by the name of some dude, I assume it's a guy, uh, he asks Siri, he says, Siri, show me what passes for exciting headline news in Gifu. Did you try that? What did it return? This story? Well, well, let me see here. Hey, Siri, show me what passes for exciting headline news in Gifu. Here's what I found. Okay, should I read this? What did you find? I Woman arrested for throwing raw eggs at neighbor's house in Gifu. Well, there you go. I guess Siri's on the money. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> A commenter by the name of Sid said, Doctors have confirmed that due to stress, she just cracked up, apparently suffering from shell shock. Yeah, I think this story was just put in the news so that people could use egg puns. I think so, too. So let's move on. Okay. You've got a bigger story, right? We definitely have a more interesting story, but this one is from entertainment. So if you're not into entertainment stories, it's probably not up your alley. <music> Japanese idol industry can be quite bizarre at times, to say the least, especially if girls who are supposed to have a squeaky clean image, quote unquote, misbehave. Momoka Tojo, a 20-year-old member of the idol group Katakoto Bank, I have no idea why they're named that way, they're definitely not a financial institution, has been naughty, according to her management. That's what her management says. I'm not saying that. Hey, what is naughty? On July 22nd, the day before her 20th birthday, she posted on X, 
formerly Twitter, photos from her birthday celebration showing her eating cake and celebrating with a young man. And that is a big no-no because idol singers are prohibited from dating or even appearing to have a boyfriend. Katakoto Bank's official X account issued a statement saying Momoko would be punished, and here's where the strangeness of this story comes in, by having to post a good night photo of herself alone every night for an entire year. At least she got off easier than the former AKB48 member, Minami Minegishi, who had her head shaved to a buzz cut after it came out that she'd spent the night at a man's apartment. Most level-headed people would see nothing wrong with a 20-year-old singer having a boyfriend. It's normal, right? But a major amount of the idol industry's lifeblood comes from fans whose level of obsession isn't exactly level-headed. Now, the whole thing is strange and unsettling to me, Kong. First of all, this isn't misbehavior. This is normal, especially for a 20-year-old girl. And I also question, how is it legal? You are in the entertainment industry, Kong. This must all just come down to contracts and things like that. Once you sign a contract, you have to stick to it. But that said, I don't think she was provided with real access to legal counsel before she signed something like this. How is she going to have a normal life? Or does the facade just end there? She takes the good night selfie every night, posts it, and then just goes back to her normal life. What do you think? Well, I'd be curious to know about her boyfriend. Maybe her boyfriend is rich. Maybe he has a great job and maybe he can get her out of the idol industry. Yeah, maybe he's just a good guy. Yeah, could be. Gary Penn, one of our readers, says, how does nobody involved, management idols fans, see how utterly ridiculous all this is? Yeah, <laughs> I, w- I was a little stunned there because that comment totally makes sense, right? Right on the money. The whole thing is ridiculous. The whole idea of this idol industry and their rules for people who want to be in one of these singing groups is really bizarre. But it also does, in my mind, point out how really obsessive and maniacal some of these, and I have to say male, fans are. The whole industry is designed around around men with some kind of disposable income that spend heaps of money to go to concerts and fan meet and greets and signings and they buy the CDs and they buy the photos and become fans on Instagram and whatever. Another commenter whose name is Virus Rex says the whole idol genre should be scrapped. People that are mediocre at best at singing, dancing, and acting, etc., are given a place under the spotlight only because they pretend to be single for fans to adore. I completely agree with that commenter. To me, this goes to a darker place as well, too. Oh, take us there. Well, first of all, idols, and again, two or three times in this podcast, I've used air quotes. These idols are mediocre singers, dancers, actors. They're not being signed to record deals because they're so good. They're just following the script. And I have to think that somewhere underneath all of this, we've spoken about Johnny Kitagawa and Johnny and Associates and what has happened with their scandals and that unmanaged mentioned secret that was going on for 20 years while he was still alive, I've got to think that there is some sexual misconduct going on with some of these idol groups and some of these agencies that take advantage of these young women who want to get into the industry, right? Like, if you are that good, you'd probably be snapped up by a legitimate record company, Sony or Warner stop at nothing to sign really, really great artists that will make the money. This whole industry thing, I can't wrap my my head around it. I can't really wrap my brain around it without going to some dark corners. I think that there's going to be more sexual misconduct allegations leveled if the Japanese media even allows itself to get to that point. But I can't imagine, as I said before, that these mediocre singing, dancing, acting artists are getting these deals because of their talent. Well, in our final story, the Paris Olympics are over. 
and there was plenty to cheer about for Team Japan. Japan won 20 gold, 12 silver, and 13 bronze medals, finishing behind only the United States and China on the medal table. Before they actually went there, they had set a goal that they were going to win 55 medals, so they got close to that. From the youthful sports of skateboarding and um, breakdancing to the more traditional Olympic pursuits of wrestling, judo, and fencing, Japan achieved unprecedented success at the Paris Games. In addition to breaking, breakdancing, I mean, it's still weird when I, when I see that, that term, but in addition to breakdancing, Japan had a number of firsts, winning gold in the women's javelin throw, silver in modern pentathlon, and diving. It wasn't all good news, as Japan struck out in team sports, such as men's and women's volleyball, and soccer, and also, as we reported a couple of episodes ago, Uta Abe's failure at getting into the medal rounds in judo was quite a heartbreaking and uh, loud. You're talking about that crying episode, right? Yes, very yeah. much so. That, that was heartbreaking. But weighing the triumphs against the disappointments, Japanese sporting authorities seemed more than happy with the direction the nation appears to be taking. The vice head of mission, Kosei Inoue, said, having so many events with first-time medals is a huge result for us. We'll look to start our preparations early for the Los Angeles Games in four years. Where there will be no cars, right? There will be no cars and, uh, thank goodness, no breakdancing, as far as I'm concerned. Really, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the breakdancing, and it was a first-time medal for the uh, Team Japan, right? Yes, and kudos to them for uh, getting the first gold medal, hopefully the only gold medal in breakdancing. I don't think it should be an Olympic event. Every Olympic Games gets to bring in a couple of new sports to try out, and some stick and some don't. Look at uh, surfing and skateboarding, sure. right? One of our readers who goes by the name of NJCA4 says, considering Russia is no longer able to take part in the Olympics, it's easy to see where the unprecedented success is coming from. That's a, a valid point, right? Regardless of people's feelings politically on Russia and what's going on, they have some great young athletes who could be competing in the Olympics. So a lot of that competition is gone. Of course, then we also bring up other things, steroid use and performance-enhancing drugs and things like that. Uh, take those bad apples out of the cart, and you still have a larger pool of competition. It's a good point. It's a thought-provoking. All like right. That. Well, we're out of time, Jeff. I can see by the big old clock on the wall. It's time for us to say that's all. Yes, that was a quick recap of the news from Japan this week for Friday, August 16th, 2024. Thanks to the Japan Today editors for curating these stories and the delicious egg puns. And thanks to all of you, our listeners, for joining us. You can find links to all of the news stories we've just mentioned in the show notes below. And since the news from Japan never stops, you can... And you should visit the Japan Today website at any time for all the latest stories. And pictures. I know you like the pictures. I yes. love the pictures, yeah. Y you can visit for the pictures. Of course, you can also find us on X, formerly Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and now YouTube. Oh, and as Kong had mentioned previously in this episode, go ahead and leave us comments on these stories on Facebook because we put every single story that... <laughs> every single story that we haven't even mentioned in this podcast, if that makes any sense. Every story on Japan Today goes up on the Facebook page. And if you leave your comments there, we can use those as well in the podcast. From the Japan Today newsroom at G Plus Media in Tokyo, I'm Jeff Richards. And I'm Kamasami Kong. Join us again next week when we return with a quick recap of Japan's biggest... And most interesting and unusual stories. Sayonara, folks. <laughs> <laughs>